In today's Health Watch, new guidelines for cervical cancer screening. On Wednesday, a government task force and other health groups recommended women ages 21 to 65 should get a pap smear every three years instead of every year. Now, if women 30 to 65 get a pap smear and a test for HPV, which causes most cervical cancers, they can wait up to five years between tests. So goes the new recommendation. Dr. Elizabeth Pointer is a gynecologist, surgeon, and cancer specialist. She joins us this morning in Studio 57. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me today. Five years sounds like a long time. Is that, is that a smart recommendation? Five years is a long time. However, we better understand the, better, the biology or the activity of precancerous changes of the cervix. We also now better understand the harms of overtreating early changes or early precancerous changes in the cervix, which a, actually may be clinically insignificant and not progress into cancer. So five years is a long time. However, we are better understanding the biology of those precancerous lesions. Some are saying, though, we've seen such a decline in the rates of cervical cancer because of this testing. This is sort of a triumph of the cancer test. So if we're testing less often, could we see cancer rates rise? Well, I think that's going to be um, reflected in when we look at that data later on, and I think that's actually a big concern. Recently, ACOG relaxed their screening guidelines to looking at pap smears every two years in women um, under the age of 30 and stretching out those intervals up to three years in women over the age of 30. And I'd like to actually see how that's going to impact on cancer morbidity and mortality before we stretch out the, the, guide, the, the screening intervals even longer. But the recommendations are based on solid and sound data, of course. It's still, for a lot of women, you know, you, you go with what you're comfortable with, and so most women are used to having this done every year. Will insurance still cover it if now there are different guidelines or recommendations? Currently, insurance um, companies are, in my practice actually, covering pap smears every year when they are necessary. And we haven't seen any issues yet. You However, say when they're necessary. Right. So However, that's a big that, difference between I'd like to have when it makes me right. feel better. However, that may be a problem in the future, but that will be up to the insurance companies in the future. So real quickly, what will you tell your patients? Will you stick to this five-year right. guideline? I will counsel my patients and look at their health history individually, and I'm going to counsel them on the risk and benefits and alternatives to more frequent screening versus less frequent screening. And I think that's very important that women understand that they still need to have their yearly annual consultation with their gynecologist to go over general health issues and other cancer screenings, along with looking at their personal health history right. and to make those decisions based on their personal health Which history. Which is that other concern. If you're not going in for the test every year, you may not go in at all. Correct. Good to, good we to, really need to educate women that you need that annual Go there every exam. year. Good to have Correct. you with us, Dr. Pointer. Thank you.